19. Written by Mackenzie Campbell. Read by Brittany George. There should be a name for eternal in-betweenness of friendship and lovers, the nature of you and me. Are there doors in your mind, some closed and locked with secrets to hide, some wide open like a book, begging to be held by anyone's hands? Does your head sometimes feel on fire, with all those memories that burn, the good and the bad? Nostalgia can do that to you. Heartbreak, too. Do you sometimes wish you could be someone new? And dump all the keys to all your doors somewhere where nobody has been before, and nobody could find them? Then maybe you won't feel so lost, but you can't just put your life on pause. It doesn't work that way. You just have to trudge on day by day and pretend you know which direction your feet are taking you and where your mind is at. Hiding everything you ever feel behind a smile is protecting everyone else but weighing your own soul down. Do you know how much pain your soul can carry? How long before your rib cage breaks and folds in half? Letting your scars show is not a weakness. Talking about the things that have caused you to ache is not shortcoming. It is strength, it is courage, it is self-care, and it is necessary. We search for truth in a world full of lies. We want honesty, but we are conditioned to be its counter. Our tongues perpetrate false statements faster than our minds can think of their implications. Our mouths form dishonest stories more often than our eyes tell the truth. We condemn each other and ourselves to a world of falsities, then blame everyone else for living in it. There are two sides to every story. Do not fall into the trap of believing in one told more often or more loudly, without ever seeking the other's truth. Sometimes it's not their fault. Sometimes it's yours. Do not make blame a habit. It is selfish to balance two people, two kisses, two no commitments, when each person on the scale is reaching for the heart at the center, blind to their weight and their counterweight and your games of symmetry and charm. You are so scared that you are going to get hurt and you hurt the other person first, but you love like this, you will, in the end, only ever be hurting yourself. Don't blame the scars of those who left on the ones trying to stay and heal. Stop watering dead relationships and expecting them to grow. Pride silences me. I've come to know the damage that can be done when I don't listen to her, the embarrassment, the inferiority. But the love I hold for you burns within me, its flames growing wilder. How do I silence the booming fire without reducing myself to cinders? Do you follow your head or your heart when both are equally right and equally wrong? My mind likes to travel to different planets. It's a bad habit. When my problems pollute the oceans and the trees, I leave for red dust storms and the comfort of craters. The universe is my home and earth is a stranger. We crave to feel vulnerable and empathetic connection with another soul, yet the fear of taking off our masks and revealing our true features prevents us from satisfying that desire. When you've arrived at that dreadful place, the place where all your negative thoughts collect, think of me and how proud I am of you, just the way you are. When your mind begins to turn the idea of leaving over and over in your head, think of me and how I believe you have a purpose. When you sit on the edge of your bathtub crying while holding a blade in your shaking hand, think of me and how I know better things are yet to come if only you put down your weapon. When your shoes are dangling off the edge of that bridge and the wind seems to whisper through your hair, let go. Think of me and how I begged you to stay. Sometimes there are no words to describe how I feel. These thoughts are caged birds inside of me, violently trying to escape. Their wings pound against my ribs, shoving air in every direction but through my lips, letting out distress calls, shrieks, I can only hear. I wish I knew how to let them out. I wish I could let them fly, set them free, but they never seem to find their way. There is this double standard where a boy loses his virginity, calls for celebration, but a girl's calls for deseration and exclusion. The same act leads to congratulations and disappointment. He did not inspire any words inside of me. For him, I could not write any poetry. 
and that's how I knew he was not the one. I never felt a spark, not even the distant heat of one. I want to be set on fire. I want a love so fiercely that the tips of my fingers become flames that I can be seen for hundreds of miles. I want to burn everything around us to ash so that we are all that exist in this space, you and me, and these embers. Everyone will know how deeply we have fallen into love, or rather how we've crashed into it, igniting these flames in the first place. He is sweet and kind in everything I have ever wanted, which is why I cannot figure out why I do not want him. Love never runs the way you wish it to. I am trying to find a way to describe this sinking feeling in my chest, the feeling that knows the end is coming and that I will be the one to tell him. To have so much and complain about having so little reveals your selfish nature and childish privilege. For all your gifts you see wrapped in plainness, to which others are lavishly wrapped in gold. Do we put up these walls and dig these trenches to keep other people out or to keep ourselves in? Thanks for reading with me today. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe.